If you're buying a home and you're wondering what is the best type of loan, you want to keep watching because today we're talking about conventional loans, everything that you need to know so that you can make the most informed decision about your upcoming home purchase. I'm Jen Hernandez. I've been a lender for lots and lots of years. I've helped thousands of people get across the finish line. I give real facts, no BS, every single week for everything you need to make those good decisions. Conventional loans are mortgages that are not guaranteed by the federal government. Those are the FHA loans. So today we're talking about private loans, loans that go through private lenders that are called conventional loans. Remember, these are 50, almost 50% 50 of the total market loans, so super popular. Conventional loans actually end up being long-term, the least expensive option. So you wanna listen carefully because we're gonna go over what you need to know to make sure that conventional loans are available to you. FHFA stands for the Federal Housing Finance Agency. That is a mouthful. So you're probably wondering, Jennifer, who are these people? Why do I care? The FHFA was actually created in 2008, back during the mortgage meltdown. I'm sure you've all heard about that. So that was when mortgages took a turn. There was a lot more oversight created and they were created in 2008 to really be the guard dog of conventional loans. They make sure that there's regulatory compliance, they make sure that rules are being followed. Now they work together with the CFPB, which is the Consumer Finance Protection Bureau, but the FHFA, the Federal Housing Finance Agency, works specifically in the conventional loan arena. Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac, you are gonna hear these names out there a lot as you're researching. Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac, were entities that were created. They're quasi-government, but they're not government agencies, so they collaborate with the government to make sure that credit is offered and that there's programs available for all types of people. They wanna make sure that no one is left behind. Jennifer, get past all this, all this boring nomenclature, all these boring definitions. I agree with you, it's a mouthful, but I wanna let you know where conventional loans come from so that we can now get into the nitty gritty of what you need to know to make sure that you qualify for a conventional loan. Did you know that as a first time buyer on conventional loans, you can put 3% down? Wow, that is so super cool. I hear this all the time like, oh Jen, I heard that I have to put 20% down for a loan. That's actually not true. So as a first time buyer, you can do as little as 3%. As a second or a third or fourth time buyer, you can do 5% down. Now, definitely you have to be able to qualify for the payment, but as long as you qualify for the payment, ding, 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 yes, you can get a conventional loan. Now where the 20% comes in, is on PMI. So we're gonna go through those things in a minute. Conventional loans are definitely dictated by loan amount. So where FHA stops at a certain amount, conventional really can go past that. And you can get in most areas, currently in 2024, you can get almost a quarter, a little over a quarter of a million dollars in a loan with 3% down. Now, if you live on the East Coast or the West Coast, you're probably in what we call a high cost area. So year to year, these amounts change. So all you need to do is you need to Google and just say conventional loan limits and the year that you're looking it up. And that's gonna tell you what the conventional loan limits are in your area, in your county. Now let's talk about credit. If you put 20% or more down, you can have as low as a 620 credit score. Now remember lenders pull all three bureaus, Equifax, Experian, and TransUnion, and we take the middle of the three. So that's really super important to know. And if you're putting less than 20% down, the credit score requirement is a little higher. It's 660, but I am here to tell you, you definitely wanna try to get in the 700s if you're gonna be getting a conventional loan because the rates are much better. Interest rates are calculated heavily on down payment credit score. Credit score is the main determinant of the interest rate on conventional loans. So that's why you wanna make sure that your credit is as high as possible. Again, you can have down to a 620 with a big down payment and a lower down payment, you can have a 660, but you're gonna pay for it in the interest rate and also the PMI factor in the loan. So if you can, try to get your credit really above like 740, that's where a lot of the better 
interest rates live for conventional loans. Now, at the end of the video, you want to stick around because at the end, we've got a special playlist for you where I've consolidated videos about increasing your credit, what is PMI, how to calculate PMI, uh, what type of loan types. If you're learning something, please consider subscribing. My team tells me that over 90% of the people that visit the channel are new. So we'd love you to keep using us for information. I release at least one video per week and I do lives. I do all kinds of info to give you real facts so that you can make a great decision for your next home purchase. So debt to income ratio is something we'll talk about next. One reason that conventional loans are a little bit more what we call stringent, not only is the credit requirement higher than the government sponsored FHA loans, but the debt to income ratio requirements are a lot more stringent. So in general, we want you to have a 45% or less debt to income ratio. That means if you earn $10,000 gross before taxes per month, 43% would mean that your max payment is $4,300 per month. That's payment including tax, insurance, the whole thing. Now we can go above that. Uh, we want your housing payment to be around 43% and your total debt no more than 45%. So that's, that's pretty stringent. Now you can go above that to almost to 50% if you have put a big down payment and meaning 20% and you have some compensating factors like lots of what we call reserves, money left over after closing, high credit scores. Those are the things that allow the automated underwriting system that lenders have to hook into. It just gives it a green light. So reserves are always good. So make sure that you tell the lender about any and all accounts that you have like 401k, savings, all of CDs, all of those things. So we can have what's called reserves. Okay. So debt to income ratio is super important in conventional loans. That's actually one of the reasons why some people hop over to the other types of loans. Don't worry, I've got a video. If you think of the other type of loan allowing higher debt is for you, we've got that video at the end in the very special playlist that I've created for you. I promised you that we would talk about PMI. That stands for private mortgage insurance. There are some ways to avoid it, but you end up paying the price anyway. So I'm gonna stick with PMI. PMI actually is your friend. PMI was created in the 80s to make less than 20% down possible. It used to be back when my parents were buying houses, everybody had to put 20% down. And then some genius came up with this insurance that buyers pay every month that allows you to put less than 20% down. So it's heavily affected by you guessed it, your credit score and your down payment. So the more you put down closer to the 20%, the less the PMI is, and the higher credit score you have, the less the PMI is. In addition, if you're two or more borrowers, the PMI gets less also, because the thought is, is that if one of the people loses their job, the other one can work to help pay the mortgage. So when you have two income earning borrowers uh, on the loan, it's a good thing. So that is PMI. And again, at the, at the, the playlist that we have for the, at the end for you is gonna have how to ca calculate PMI. And there's also ways you can waive PMI. So bonus, you don't have to pay PMI forever. There are ways to waive it. So we wanna make sure and get you that information as well. Can you have a co-signer on a conventional loan? Yes, you can. You need to have someone who's a close family relation. They can be a very good friend. You need to document a relationship. You can also get down payment assistance for the down payment, as long as you follow whatever your state guidelines are regarding down payment assistance. So depending on the state where you live, there are gonna be limits based on income, credit score. So you wanna make sure that if you're available for down payment assistance, you might be able to add that to your conventional loan and get down payment assistance as well. Conventional loans are also really open to things like gifts from family members, using money from your 401k for down payment. So make sure to talk to your lender about those types of things. Conventional loans are really best fit for people with higher credit scores and lower debt. So get pre-approved as soon as possible so that you can make sure that this is the right loan for you. And then stick around, I release a video every single week to help you know and be in the know about your home purchase. Talk to you soon.